Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so as mentioned before, I'm just mostly doing the monthly roundup ones at this point. Um, so that the weeks in between, I can be doing um, the little shorts that I've been doing. I may not necessarily do those every single week if I'm not feeling particularly well or if my jaw's playing up too much, as may well be the case um, a lot of the time. So if you ever notice that there's not necessarily one every single week, that's probably going to be predominantly the reason why. They will be the weeks when I'm able to do them. As I've mentioned before, they do take a lot of work to do um, and a lot of concentration to do. So if I'm not necessarily feeling particularly well or if I've got a lot of stuff going on, then I'm not going to do one that particular week. Um, but if I'm you know, able to, then I'm going to be doing them. And once a month, I'm going to be doing my little monthly roundup ones. Um, so September feels like it's gone by really quickly. Um, I'm not completely sure why it seems to have sort of gone by so quickly, but it has. I've definitely not been feeling particularly well for the last week or so. Um, so my jaw's really not great at the moment. Every time I get a cold or a cough or anything like that, my jaw just plays up right away. And um, yeah, that's part of the reason why I ended up losing my voice again last week. Uh, for the millionth time this year um yeah so that's that's been fun to deal with i love being unwell um having said that like literally everybody at work seems to come down with the same thing at the exact same time it's really weird so most of last week people were phoning in sick left right and center everybody who was in like half of them were saying they were feeling really unwell with the same sort of symptoms that i sort of had um, and on top of that, one of my fellow colleagues who actually had last week off came back and was like, didn't really enjoy her week off because she was unwell with it as well. So, like, literally everybody seems to have come down with whatever this cold is at the same time. And I don't know if it's just like a post-summer thing or what it was, but I'm, I'm still not 100% now. Um, and most people that I know that had it last week are still not 100%. Um, there are a few people who are now picking it up from the people who had it last week, so it's, it's great. Um, but yeah, it's it, like last week, it's not, I've not been particularly great with, with that, and yeah, that's fun. Um, but like, even without that, September feels like it's been like a really short month for some reason. I feel like at one minute we were like the beginning of September, and then suddenly, like, September is over. Um, I don't know why it's felt like such a short month, but it has felt like so, such a short month, and yeah, I mean, it is what it is, you, you get them occasionally where, where things go really quickly, um, so I guess with the sort of like the negative of the last sort of week out of the way, the most exciting thing that happened this month is I get a new tattoo, look at it, look at all the new tattoo, look, 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 it actually has healed up pretty quickly um compared to, to this one um i know black ink does tend to heal a lot faster so that's probably part of um the reason why that it has um not that i'm complaining um it's at a phase now where it's sort of it's still feeling a bit dry and itchy um so i'm still sort of moisturizing it it now just over two weeks since i got it so i got it on the 10th it's now the 27th so yeah, just over two weeks um, since I had it done, um, I'm still sort of like doing all this, the skincare stuff that I need to with it. I'm sort of cutting down how many times I'm moisturising it throughout the day, which makes it easier for work. Because <laughs> um, at the moment, or what I had been doing is I'd been like moisturising it at the end of my break. Um, and because of where it is and because my, my shirt sleeves don't go up high enough um, to sort of do it without having to take my shirt off first, it's been a bit awkward. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I'm no longer having to do the one sort of midway through the work day, but I am doing um, the other ones mostly still. Sort of keeping an eye on it like on my days off and like only doing it extra if I need to on my days off. I'm doing like an extra one when I get home um, from work because like underneath 
like the, just the environment of work is not necessarily the best for your skin anyway um the heat can make things quite dry and stuff like that but yeah i'm really happy with it so this this one here is mew's actual footprint um much bigger than mew obviously <laughs> so it's an enlarged version of her paw print but this one this is the one that's actually based on her actual paw print and then these two have been designed to sort of match it um a little bit not not perfectly obviously as you can see but to sort of match it um and then this here is past future and present so yeah it's very much a tribute to all my sets uh past future and present um just you know it's something i've been thinking about since getting uh muse actual paw print it took me a while to sort of like really sort of finalize what kind of design i wanted to go with it or thematically what i wanted to do with it um i sort of definitely ended up a lot bigger than my initial initial thoughts for it um but i knew it would have to be bigger than the actual paw print size because i know so well uh, from this one that there's only so much detail that they can put in at certain sizes before it sort of like starts getting blurry and stuff like that so i knew it would have to be bigger than the original paw print um but i didn't know how big it would need to be until i sort of started talking to a tattoo artist and was told that this space here which is where i initially thought it might go um would be too small for it um at that point i was like oh yeah you know it needs to be scaled up to a fair size um so i wasn't surprised at how big it ended up being <laughs> um i know uh, some of the people who knew beforehand what i was planning to get were surprised that it ended up being as big as it is um but i sort of knew from from as soon as i started talking to the tattoo artist um and as soon as i knew that like that space there on its own wasn't going to be quite big enough um in order to get the details um that i wanted to have there that it would need to be a fair size at which point i was like yeah no i i, I understand what i'm going in for and i actually quite like it like it's quite good like there, there, there's something about it like when I sort of like um, catch it at the right moments it's really good and I like so those you can't really see it very well with this camera but there's like lots of little like grey detailing and textured detailing in the way that it's been shaded and yeah I, I really like it <laughs> um, fortunately we are coming into winter so it's now going to be covered up for the next six months <laughs> It's also like kind of annoying because um, the sleeves of my work shirt. I don't do this to everyone. I think it's probably because like even when I got the work shirt, I got it a size bigger than I needed um, for certain reasons. So because it like because of that, like the shirt sleeves on me come down to here, so it's really hidden in work. <laughs> um, you can kind of like. Because I'm wearing one of the manager shirts, you can kind of like see one of the paw prints a little bit through the shirt sleeve because um, the, the shirt material is thin enough to do that. Just just the one, the other two not not so much, but just the one. So I'm like, okay, you can you can see that it's there, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of annoying that like my shirt sleeve co covers all of it. So it's like apart from like you know doing certain things and the shirt sleeve sort of like lifting up a little bit, it is mostly hidden. Um, however, I did know. <laughs> getting it done in September meant that I would then be faced with several months of it like being undercover um because winter was coming I was hoping like because sometimes you get like warm enough I mean like it's the end of September and I'm still in a t-shirt um so you know I was I was kind of hoping maybe sleepless weather for just a little tiny bit longer but it is what it is it's a time of year that it is um so yeah I'm I'm oh. As you can see, very, very happy, very excited with it. Um, can't wait to be showing it off properly next summer or next spring, summer when when the weather starts getting a bit warmer again. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really happy with it. Um, and then I'm already sort of been thinking of my what my next tattoos will be. Um, there is another one I've sort of vaguely got ideas slash designs for. Um, that I've been thinking about for about the same length of time that I've been considering this well since I got this one done I sort of started considering the design for this but obviously this one I've sort of been considering for a lot longer which is why I went for this one as my next one 
Um, obviously, with the world being what it is at the moment, it may take me a while to save up for a bigger piece. Um, and with that in mind, I've kind of been like going, oh, hmm, maybe I could get something smaller and, and cheaper that you know could be done relatively quickly and <laughs> not cost so much. I you know quite I'd like a few more tattoos now. Um, yeah, I know I'm probably turning into a bit of a tattoo addict, and at the same time, I like I do want to make sure that I've spent the time thinking about things and contemplating things. I mean, I. I was considering this one for a long time before I actually got it. Um, mostly it was sort of like based on the um, I'm not perfect and then sort of trying to decide what to go with it. Likewise with this one, I knew I wanted to use the paw print, but I didn't you know, really finalise the dark design until a, a lot closer to the time. Um, and I was sort of like going, yeah, I know I definitely want to do this. So it's one of those things where if I'm thinking for a long enough period of time, oh, that is something I definitely want and that's, you know, Maybe I haven't like 100% finalised what the idea is, but I've had a good idea of what I, you know, I want it to be, and like the basic element of it remains the same. Um, then I know I kind of want it. So at the moment, I've got like a few ideas, um, flickering around my head. Obviously, the one that I want for this one, um, I definitely know what the base of the design is. It's just a case of a finding a design that I'm 100% happy with and B, it's probably going to be slightly more expensive, so saving up for it. Um, which in this economy is not the easiest thing to do, so it's definitely not going to happen this year because they've got Christmas to pay for still. Yay, Christmas! <laughs> and I know, I know, it's September, but this is a very weird September roundup that I'm doing right now, and I do, I do apologise, I'm getting very distracted with the whole tattoo stuff. Um, but I have started buying Christmas presents already. And I've started buying Christmas presents already now because I, I've i already, like, I've planned out what I'm going to buy everybody. I'm keeping within a very strict budget this year. I mean, most years I've got, like, a loose idea of what the budget is. But this year, I like, with all the hikes, with the energy bills and stuff like that, I decided the most sensible thing I could do was sit down, look for things, make decisions, create a budget, and stick within that budget and try and as much as possible not overspend this year because money is so much tighter this year. I say that having just bought myself a new tattoo, which is, wasn't the cheapest thing in the world to do, but at the same time I also cut out takeaways for two months in order to be able to afford it, um, and I'm going to continue cutting out takeaways for the rest of the year in order to be able to afford Christmas, and that is very much the situation that I'm in. Um, but at the same time, it's one of those things where I've reached a point where I would rather have money to do the things that I actually want to do, um, rather than have money for treating myself to food, which I'm not always necessarily enjoying. Um, so I've like changed what my weekly food treat is to something which can be fitted very easily within my actual food budget um, rather than an expense that I don't need. And it'll also then allow me to sort of be able to go out and do things with my friends because I'm going to have the money there to be able to do things with my friends, which I don't currently have because it's all been going, had all been going on to take away and stuff like that. So I'm, yeah, cut, cutting out the, the weekly takeaway um, in favour of being able to do things I actually want to do is a, you know, is how I want to be sort of like going forward from here 100 percent um at the same time it's also a case of uh, but <laughs> I do kind of miss those takeaways but again like I'm, it's going to be more of a treat when I do sort of have them um but yeah it, it, I do feel like I'm very much in a financial situation at the moment where I don't feel like I should have had to make that choice because this time last year I wouldn't have had to have made that choice. This time last year I would have had the money to do everything. But the vast increase in my bills because of the energy crisis means that I now have to make choices like that in order to do the things I actually want to do. Um, and like I said, that does mean... Well, I would have had to have saved up for things anyway, but it does mean that I'm now having to cut certain things out of my lifestyle in order to be able to afford to do things that I really want to do. And it's not, 
it's not the best situation to be in I shouldn't like I said this time last year I didn't have to choose I mean I know I wasn't wealthy I'm not going to claim that I had loads of money but I was comfortable I was in a situation where I was comfortable enough to be able to do myself a not cheap (laughs) treat every single week and still be able to afford to do all the things I want to do whereas now I'm more in a situation where it's kind of like I feel like I have to be very tight with my money in order to be able to afford anything and doing things like going like going for a midweek break away or stuff like that feels very unattainable at the moment um because like I said I I have to afford Christmas and that's going to wipe out any additional savings that I have um if I say any additional savings that I have so I've got savings for my future which I'm not touching at all that does not get touched that just gets left that is just for the future and that's that's it um and then I have a little bit of savings which I use for other things so that is the savings that I use to pay for the tattoo that will be the savings that I'll use to pay for Christmas um which is basically whatever is left over from my fortnightly budget <laughs> like when, when everything else has gone out of my fortnightly pay um that is the amount that's left over that then has to either save up towards stuff or gets used to pay for anything that isn't food related um and it's not like a huge amount so it does take a long time to recoup it after i've spent money on other things um so like one of the big reasons that you know I reached a situation where I was kind of like, I, I'm going to struggle to afford Christmas this year, so I need to be like on a really tight budget about it, um, is basically for, for that kind of reason, and, and um, yet yeah, again, I know I, I spent money on the tattoo, and that was not a cheap thing to do, but that was also something that I'd been wanting to do for more than a year at that point, and it felt like now was the right time to do it. Um, And it also gave me a chance to see just how much um, difference cutting out the takeaway would do um, in order to be able to sort of free up my finances a bit more next year for doing things. Again, it's one of those things where it's going to take me a while to save up for stuff. And it's going to have to be a case of I need to save up for something before I can decide to do something. And that is how I've got to look at it. Um, So with the Christmas stuff, it's more whatever is left of my paycheck each fortnight will some of that will go towards buying like buying gifts um and the, like every single year i've been like breaking up um when i buy gifts for people so like every fortnight i will buy like two or three more gifts and then the next fortnight i'll buy two or three more gifts which is why i have to start in september <laughs> else i can't afford to do it <laughs> else it gets too close to the time and then, then i run out of time um but yeah, it's uh, very much that sort, of, that sort of situation at the moment uh, for me, where it's a case of like every single penny needs to be accounted for, and this time of year, like every single penny is accounted for because I'm having to buy Christmas presents, and like the tattoo was just like it's just that last little thing that I could do before coming into like the tightest budgeting point of year for me, which will be from now until the end of end of November beginning of December because that's when I like to have everything done and sorted and even then I'll probably like have a couple of things that I need to spend out for just after that as well so yeah it's one of those where it's like this is the last thing I can do before that really tight period of time comes in I've cut out the takeaways in order to be able to afford it so I can justify spending the money because I've taken away my weekly treat in order to get a lifetime treat so um but yeah, so I apologise this monthly roundup has kind of derailed itself several times over um, and I'm sure you can hear from my voice that some of my cold symptoms are starting to come through um, and again, like the whole jaw thing is making that a lot worse. Um, so in like the 12 years that I've been working for a company that I've been working for, despite working in a position where you use your voice a lot and you shout a lot and, and that's just the nature of the business that I'm in, in like the 11 years prior to this year um i'd lost my voice because i had laryngitis once i mean obviously my voice would get a little bit strained whenever i had a cold so a bit like this whenever i had a cold but i didn't lose my voice 
apart from that once when I had laryngitis and I had like two chest infections during that period of time so trust me when I say like I was as sick as I could be and like I still didn't lose my voice like most of the time that I was working there this year I've lost my voice multiple times my voice has become incredibly strained and compromised which is the word that I've been using for it multiple times and every single time my jaw's playing up at the same time so I know there is a connection there even if you could say well this particular time it's probably more bound to the cold than anything else it's like well no I've had this kind of cold before trust me I don't usually lose my voice because of it and the fact that I only really lost it for like a very short amount of time and yet compromised um well I did follow and lose it for like half a day and even then it was more on the compromise end of it than the full stop lost end of it because it kept coming in and out um that is very much like yeah i'm very much blaming my jaw for the compromising the compromises to my voice uh, that have been happening um every time i get a cold this year because that's not standard fare for me um this is the first time i've had a cold and lost my voice this year all the other times that i've lost my voice voice this year i want to stress i did not have a cold as well this is the only time where it's combined um however when i've had a little bit of a cold or a little bit of a sniffle during the year my voice has been slightly more compromised it's just not been lost it's just been more compromised than it normally is when i have a cold because whenever anybody has a cold their voices are slightly compromised it's just the way it works so it is definitely worse because of my jaw and yeah, I still have no idea when I'm seeing the specialist about that. Sorry, hair in my mouth. I still have no idea when I'm seeing the specialist about that because why would I have any idea when I'm going to see the specialist at this point? Like, I'm probably going to see them next year. Just not going to happen, is it? Um, and, like, increasingly more and more frustrated with that because, like I said, it is... Like, the number of times my voice has been strained, gone, compromised where things have not sounded quite right, where I've had issues with, like, not, like, full-on issues with swallowing, but where I've um, definitely been hyper-salivating, so I've been having to swallow more, which is not the most comfortable thing to do when your jaw is in pain, but, <laughs> by the way. Um, like, the amount of discomfort that I've had, the, you know, amount of times where it is spasmed, where it is just shocked through with pain, where it's just, yeah, it's not been particularly pleasant and I've been putting up with it at this level um, where it's just been continually, at the bare minimum, continually uncomfortable with like flare-ups that have been taking it really bad since the beginning of, well, since the end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, and that was after like two years of having occasional flare-ups but not necessarily having the discomfort in between. So the fact that I've been putting up with it for this long and I'm still on the waiting list and like my GP surgery is ignoring me when I'm complaining about it. Um, yeah, that's that's good. That's great. Um, <laughs> but again, that's nothing to do with September. Um, I apologise. My September roundup has been very sidetracked. Um, I guess because it's one of those where because I haven't been doing the weekly stuff and I suddenly have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, these monthly roundups are probably going to end up being a bit more like a sit down, having a catch up, talking about random stuff, rather than the strict monthly roundups that they used to be, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means that I've got stuff to talk about when I sit down, it means that hopefully it's more interesting for you guys as well to sort of catch up and hear all the stuff that's been going on and stuff like that. Um, Anyway, I, on that note, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time. And I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others. And if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.